Okay, thank you, uh, Eduard. Welcome everyone to this Agora Museum um, conversations that we will have today. And I want to invite the first uh, speaker, who is a philosopher. He uh, was born here in Barcelona. He works for um, the, his professor of aesthetics in the Depart Department of Humanities at the Pompeu Fabra University. And he will be introducing the first block uh, of culture and philosophy. Please welcome Amador Vega. Welcome, Amador. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we will start with uh, the first question, that is, um, what key factors that need to be carefully nurtured and foster harmonious coexistence in the Mediterranean region, and what will be the main characteristic of a shared Mediterranean culture? Yes, thank you. That, that's a very difficult <laughs> question, and I have just 10 minutes or more or less. No? Well, thank you for the invitation. And I have written some ideas uh, about the question. Um, if you are to speak of a possible harmony or harmonious coexistence, it is because we believe it is possible. Babel, realistic. It is because we believe there are elements we share. From our shared geographies and geopolitics to our shared history and the shared roots of our languages. Languages which have resulted in convergences and divergences, points of meeting, points of conflict. Perhaps it would be better to ask ourselves what we understand by harmony. In the first place, a point I will come back to later. The region of the Mediterranean, as well as sharing these elements, has the advantage and the disadvantage of functioning as a mirror, as a mirror along different axes, as a kind of reflecting pool. North reflecting south, east reflecting west, weaker economies reflecting the stronger, etc. We see and we are seen by our neighbors on the other side of the Mediterranean Sea. This act of reflecting or of, or of reflection in which we see ourselves not always in our best light obligates in us a certain humility, but also a certain sympathy towards our neighbors who are, so to speak, in the same boat. We can make the best of this sometimes unsettling reality only if we embrace a fully fledged critical consciousness with regard to our common history. This means shared and self-critical models of education, freedom, social justice, and that's the most important, perhaps, and respect for our differences. Differences as well, our commonalities. It's okay? You did great. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, actually, um, we have a short brief time more, so you can extend a little bit more on the following question, which is, what advantages and disadvantages does laicism as a meeting point and source of respect among all religions and beliefs in the Mediterranean region present? Uh, that's, more, that's more difficult to yeah. answer these ideas about la laicism, but uh, I try to. 
laces. That's a difficult word, <laughs> laces. What does it mean? For me, laces cannot be understood as some sort of fix-all solution, as a position of neutrality. That's not truth. Or as the absence of a position, not having a position to speak of. The history of laicism is a striking one. The promotion of secularism as a value in and of itself or a guarantee of something has often shown it to act in authoritarian and dogmatic ways like any religion does or can do. Religion is an undeniable cultural fact, so I mean, and for better or worse, it simply isn't possible to understand human culture without the religious dimension. Now, the three major religions in Mediterranean Sea and in the Mediterranean region, the three major religions, we are often called the Hebraic religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, have shared their roots. Across the centuries and at different points, these religions have shown greater or lesser, greater or lesser interest in eliminating their differences. That is, combating non-believers or members of other faiths. As you may or not know, the Iberian Peninsula, Spain, has been a sort of laboratory for testing the coexistence of these three religions. I'm speaking around 13, 14, 15 century. On the one hand, it was a place of significant and surprising religious tolerance. Yes, a kind of tolerance. And this tolerance brought, out, brought about a stunning progress in science and culture. It's impossible to understand the University of Paris, today the Sorbonne, the University of Paris in the 13th century, without the transmission of ancient text books from Athens. Books which traveled through Baghdad, where they were translated from Greek to Syriac and Arabic, and which in Sicily, but principally in what is now Spain, were translated in Hebrew and in Latin. From here, from Spain, they travel north to Paris. Well, I mean, it's impossible to understand the history of modern science in Europe without the history of the transmission of the manuscripts of the Greek philosophy from Greece to through Baghdad, South Italy, Sicily, and then Al-Andalus, Spain. It's impossible to understand this history. We have to deal with these very different histories, but at the same time, one and self, for me, at least, history. There, in Spain, of course, were also moments of intolerance, especially when culture and science moved north and a single faith, for instance, the Christian faith, was imposed on the assumption that religious unity was the only foundation for political unity. I'm going to speak about, very briefly, about this idea of unity. The idea was to have a single, a single one religion in Spain, 15th century, 14th and 15th century. As a conclusion of these uh, short ideas, I want, I want to say the following reflection. Having said all this, I want to end by bringing your attention to a figure who had a surprising way of navigating the problem of religious 
and cultural and cultural difference. In the 13th and 14th century, a polymath called Ramon Llull, in Latin Raimundus Lulus, who was born in Mallorca but spent much of his life traveling in the Mediterranean region, had a vision for coexistence that didn't pass by unification. Didn't pass by unification. Unification as in the elimination of difference. That's my thesis here. Identity against difference. You wrote almost 300 books in Latin, medieval Catalan, and Arabic in 14th century. Books about science, about medicine, about uh, navigation, philosophy, theology, uh, law, in Latin, Arabic, and in medieval Catalan. And was driven in his work by the, by the problem of coexistence between the three Hebraic religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam. And in one of his, uh, for me, one of the uh, best works, uh, Liber Philosophia Moris, Arbor Philosophia Moris in Latin, written in Paris at that time, he wrote these words on which I'd like to end now. In love, in love, there is no concord concordance without difference. In love, there is no concordance without difference. I want to point this at this point. He was speaking not about unity between religions, but about concordance. Concordance is a, is a Romance language coming from Latin, comes from, you know that, perhaps the Italian, French people here, Cors Cordis, heart, concordance. The concordance is the guarantee of difference not unity. Thank you. Thank you, Amador. Now we have time for uh, questions from the audience. So we will begin with the first one. Okay. Hello. My name is Shabna, and uh, I'm a student from the Port of Rome. And um, I want to know that um, what is the role of um, Mediterranean culture in shaping the Western aesthetic and mysticism? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's one of my, my fields of, <laughs> of research, uh, the relations between aesthetics or, or, or art, the arts and religions. Mm? Yeah. Mm. Well, I think uh, we are not speaking about religion now, but, but about mysticism. Hmm? Mysticism is, is the, uh, the highest experience in religion, not just in Christianity, but in, in Islam, the Sufi way, no? or the Kabbalah in the uh, Judaic world, and so on. Uh, for me, mysticism is a, is a very modern phenomenon. It's not, it's, it's not uh, just a uh, uh, thing of, uh, of coming from uh, the Middle Ages. It's very modern because the experience of the mystical men and women is the, is the experience of the absence of God. It's not the fullness of God that was in the antiquity. It's the absence of God. There is, there's not the idea that there is no God. It's the idea that I am perceiving the absence of God. Well, this absence of God has to do with the idea of cancelling the images. Every kind or sort of image is not God. And that has, has uh, for me to do with the modern abstract art, hmm? the way of disfiguring, 
the, the way of this figure in, in abstract art in 20th century, for instance, for me, has the common roots and, or the common uh, context uh, with uh, at least the three Mediterranean religions. Not only the three Mediterranean religions, because in Buddhism we, we see, of course, the same idea of, the, of uh, not God, but the Godness as a, a vacuity or as a kind of of emptiness. Uh, yes, it's uh, no okay. I have uh, some uh, some uh, some time. Well, um, well then um, in in the Mediterranean uh, region or um, uh, space, we can find a common place to discuss about not the dogmas, no, not the, the the truth of the faith of, uh, the, of the Islam, of, of uh, the Judaism, the Christianity, but a common place to expose our emotions in art coming from these ancient roots of mysticism and religion. I don't know if you, if I, ca if I had explained uh, well the, these ideas because uh, when we are speaking about mysticism, we are speaking about a very special way of uh, to understand religion. It's the more abst abstract way to speak about religion. It's not to speak about the image of God. It's, 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 a sort, uh, it's a sort of speaking about the absence of God. In this sense, uh, in this way, mysticism and, and atheism, I'm sorry for, for this word, mysticism and atheism, they share a common place. And that's our modernity in Europe. Hmm? Thank you. So we can start with the next question. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Hamza Mouli. I'm a student uh, for, from uh, the port of Rajs, Tunisia. Marhaba. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my question for you is how do you perceive the interplay between culture and religion in the Mediterranean region? And what role does this dynamic play in shaping the socio political and economic landscape of the area? Yes, I, I don't know how I should uh, uh, answer this uh, question because um, I think it's, impos it's, it's impossible to have an economy or a, a, a political or politics without, uh, without integrating religion and theology. Economy, economy is, is, as you know, perhaps is, is a Greek word that means is, is a plan, is a planification. Huh? God said, first day, Monday, we have, I don't know, we had meat. <laughs> uh, on Thursday, we have fish. On, <laughs> is, 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 that's, that's, the, that's the holy history uh, in the three religions in the Mediterranean Sea. No? It's a kind of economy. God, God is, the, is the manager of this division of time and space yeah? and place. No? Well, I think um, in order to, to have uh, a rich economy, in order to have a rich culture, we have to integrate the, the, religi the religious element of our culture. I have nothing more to say about this question. Thank you. Well, thank you. We can begin with the next one. Well, good evening. My name is Alexandra. Uh, I represent uh, Fundación Valencia Port, uh, the Port of Valencia. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Great. And my question is, uh, how does such kind of projects like YEPMED project uh, promote the collaboration in Mediterranean region culturally and in general? Thank you. Thank you. That's uh, Eduardo Rodes who should answer this, <laughs> this question. I don't know. I think. Yeah, yeah, but, but the, well, uh, the European school, no? this school is, uh, from, I think, I, I don't know very well the school, no? uh, I know uh, Eduardo this more or less, no? <laughs> and, um, but it's a, it's a nice idea, it's the best place to, to, to lose identity, it's the best place to forget our identities, to, sus to suspend for a while, huh? if you are Italian or you are Spanish or you are French or, 
Oh, you are coming from, from Beirut, a place that I love very much. Uh, you come here, and this place is not a Spanish place. It's not a Catalan place. This place is the, the figure or the image or, I don't know, the monument for something who uh, belongs to every one of us. Hmm? And you come here to suspend your identities. Because if you, if you are not able to sus suspend, suspend is uh, to cancel your identities. Huh? In Greek, we have, uh, in ancient Greek, uh, we have this word uh, epoche. Epoche is a kind of, to put in, uh, in a sort of island, uh, your identities. Then you come here and you are, I don't know, you are Carlos or Maria or, but uh, you are in this position to head the other one. So, to put apart your culture, your religion, hmm? your ideas about culture and religion, <laughs> and your own lives. No? That's a good chance to do that. No? I hope uh, the future of this school goes also in this way. Thank you. Uh, the final question will come from uh, Hanifa. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Hanifa Hamouri from uh, Aqaba Development Corporation. I'm the coordinator for the YPF project in Aqaba. And my question is, how do Islamic and Arab philosophy affects the understanding uh, of uh, morality and ethics in the modern Mediterranean society? Uh, that's a very important question. Yes, I remember this question. Uh, I, I tried to answer uh, um, some bits of this question in my, in my, second, in my first uh, question. No? Uh, but uh, your question now has to do with morality. No? Um, well, if we in Europe and West countries, uh, we are not able to accept that in our own history, the Arabic culture and uh, Islam as well mm, are essential parts of our own history, mm, then that's for me impossible to understand uh, common values. Because the modern values in Europe, coming from the I don't know, French Revolution, perhaps, some of them, the, the laicist values, uh, they are just a part of our uh, idea of morality. We need, we need the other side of this reflecting pool. Without uh, without having uh, a kind of, uh, we need a common critical space in order to understand a common morality. Without religions in this mo at this moment, but without the religious culture coming from Egypt, from Jordania, from from Lebanon, from France, from Italy, from Spain. Hmm? Because uh, for me, at least, uh, moral principles without religious culture are weak. Thank you. Well, that was actually very interesting and uh, insightful. Thank you for your um, conversation with us. And uh, well, we, we will welcome now Marcel. And uh, thank you.